Well, good morning. Welcome to this morning's reflection. And we continue to look at the effect of desire upon spiritual growth and on the direction that our spiritual journey takes. The depth of our desire has a great deal to do with the outcome of our life. I'll say that again. The depth of our desire has a great deal to do with the outcome of our life. Very often those who, who accomplish what they set out to do in life are not those who are the most talented or the most gifted or those who have had the best opportunities. But often they're the ones who are most deeply in touch with how badly they want whatever they want. They are the ones who consistently refuse to be deterred by things that many of us will allow to become excuses. The paralytic was full of excuses. I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And Jesus' response in effect was, never mind all that. Stand up, take up your mat and walk. Then the paralysed man reached within himself to the place of deep desire and deep faith and did what he was told. And somehow his willingness to follow his desire opened the way for him to experience Jesus' healing power. Jesus' interactions with the people he came into contact with during his life on earth make it clear that desire and the willingness to name that desire in Christ's presence is a catalytic element of the spiritual life. It is one of the most powerful motivators for a life lived consistently with intentionality and focus. Beyond that, the willingness to open up this tender and sometimes volatile place in Christ's presence is part of the intimacy we seek. Somehow it creates the possibility for Christ to be with us in a way that meets our truest need. It enables us to rise up from our place by the side of the road so that we can actually get on the path to spiritual transformation. And now I'd like you to take a moment just to settle yourself into a comfortable position. Breathe deeply in this moment as a way of releasing any tension that you might be holding. And become aware of God's presence. A presence which is closer than the air you breathe. Allow yourself to enjoy God's presence in quietness just for a few moments. When you feel ready, imagine yourself in the historical setting of the story of Bartimaeus as it unfolds in scripture. See yourself as the person needing something from Christ and calling out to him from the noisy crowd.
How do you approach him? How do you try to get his attention? What words do you use? What emotions do you feel? Imagine that in response to your cry, Jesus turns to you. Now, you are face to face with him. Allow yourself the full realization that you have Jesus' complete attention, because you do. And hear his question addressed to you. What do you want me to do for you? Do not be afraid of your emotion. It is important that you let yourself feel just how deep your desire goes. You may need to sit with the question and your response for quite some time before you are fully aware of your heart's deep desires or before you are fully able to express it. Give this question and the answer all the time that it needs. And you may want to stop this now. And perhaps go for a walk. Lie in the grass and feel the warmth of the sun or curl up under your blanket. But let this question sit with you. What do you want me to do for you? If you choose to journal, it might help to begin with the statement, God, what I most need or want from you right now is, and then just let your thoughts flow and listen for Christ's response. Don't feel as if you have to do anything. Simply relish the intimacy and richness that come when we are able to be with what is in God's presence. And so I leave you to sit with that question. And I hope that you are blessed by the answers that arrive and by Jesus' response. Amen.